Hey, Niaji everyone. My name is uh, Marek and I am on the next two session as the uh, guest host for the Perform Music Incubator podcast sessions, um, replacing MDQ. I hope you're not too disappointed. Uh, yeah, uh, but I'm here with uh, Muthoni Noni today. Um, I'll let her introduce herself as well. I am the MD and founder at Africa Centric Entertainment, which is a talent festival and a brand agency. Um, and I have the pleasure to be here with Muthoni today to talk about artist management and everything that it encompasses. So Muthoni, why don't you introduce yourself to everyone and then we can kick off. Hey, thank you so much for having me. My name is Muthoni Aseda. I am a talent manager for different um, social media influencers and yeah, background in psychology. Um, yeah, you need that. <laughs> to deal we're with. just talking about it before we started. Everybody needs a background in psychology yeah. for everything, basically. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then now I transitioned just post COVID into the talent management field. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess we have the next 20, 30, 40 minutes to really just deep dive into this. I guess we both talk about it quite a bit because yeah. it's seemingly the most. Um, the most, I think, the biggest one of the biggest gaps in the market. Whoever I speak to, from West Africa to South Africa, mm. from record labels to artists to brands that work with artists mm. to booking agents uh, to publicists, everybody is just like, there's a massive shortage of qualified oh, um, talent managers yeah. um, in the industry right throughout. Um, so maybe let's just. We'll go step by step. We'll yeah. dive into it. We have some questions to yeah. guide us as well. Right, let me ask you, yeah. is there a shortage <clears throat> or do we not just take the time to understand what it means? Because I think we, the thing we do is not particularly rocket science. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's involving, right? Yeah. But once you have the right person in your corner, then it flows. But I don't think it's a it's a problem of shortage. I think it's that people are not necessarily putting as much work. You know the work you put into buying a new car? Sure. Right? You do your homework, yeah, yeah. you check the brand, yeah. you, you know, you window shop. We don't do that with managers. You're like, this person is my friend, they'll be my manager. Yeah, true. So I don't like think like I said, you can do everything. This approach can be done to everything, like you mentioned, even yeah. to buying a car, right? Mm -hmm. Just doing it the right way. But you would sometimes really, you know overestimate the approach that people take to certain things that they do, right? <laughs> You'd <laughs> be surprised. Some people okay. just be like, take you know, take even okay. with buying cars, right? Yeah. I think, and we talk about this quite a bit. Mm -hmm. When you mention it's not rocket science what we do, mm -hmm. I mean, unless you're doing rocket science, I don't think anything <laughs> else is really rocket science, right? True. Yeah. I mean, it's it we we're in the business of dealing with human beings. Mm -hmm. We're in the service industry, basically, yeah. right? Yeah creative industry there really isn't a right or wrong and no. we'll, we'll jump into that as well which yeah. i think also makes this quite different than you know if you work in other other fields mm -hmm. as well where it's a little bit easier because there's just a right or wrong and you know just there's how structure. to get there's, there's structure yeah. and over here you know in terms of creatives mm. which is one of the things that is a plus and a minus at the same time because there's but you know i feel like yeah there is a shortage of, of, of managers for several mm -hmm. reasons. But mm -hmm. one of the main ones I would say is mm -hmm. the 844 system that I got to know Ooh. over the 13, 14 years that I've been living in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I never had to participate in it. <laughs> I would say, I guess, you thank God, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it's also because Ace is a management company as well, right? Mm -hmm. We manage over 15 talent and mm -hmm. not just in music. Mm -hmm. We focus on sports, film, TV. Mm -hmm. um, so the talent is varied and I think We'll touch up on this as well. I mm -hmm. think in terms of talent management, it's not just musicians that need managers, managers right? right? From influencers mm. all the way to actors, to mm. sports stars, mm -hmm. to politicians. Um, everybody, you know, can do a lot better once they get to a certain level with a with a with a professional manager. But uh, the eight four four system, I feel like to be a good manager, and we oftentimes speak about it. I mm -hmm. feel like you need to 
have both of your hemispheres, I believe, <laughs> you know, switched on, right? Uh -huh. Because we call it changing gears. Yeah. My team is like, okay, Marek, time to change gears because mm -hmm. in the five to 10 meetings that I have in a day, mm -hmm. I go from an accounting meeting to a creative meeting, mm. to a social media strategy meeting, mm -hmm. to, a, you know, uh, to a legal meeting. So I have to switch gears between, yeah. you know, the right hemisphere. I can't just have my creative side working. The then I day, come across yeah. a spreadsheet and I go, you know, yeah. like, or vice versa, you know, go to a creative meeting and have zero inputs. Yeah. I like to be involved in, 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 in the kind of creative strategy as well. So I think creative thinking and critical thinking mm -hmm. are the things that kind of I feel like allow you to. So when we're looking for talent, mm -hmm. managers, mm -hmm. we really struggle because, yeah, it's that's so that's why I think it's a bit of a shortage. But tell me, what, what is your definition of, of, of a good talent manager? What, what are the characteristics? Um, I think... Before I answer that, I think okay, maybe we just agree to disagree mm -hmm. because I've met very good managers who can transition into being talent managers or, you know, um, areas. But the biggest um, handicap is people do not take the time to understand. Um, we're so to understand what this industry needs or does. Mm. Right. We're so used to referring to it as a scene like we were before. <laughs> right. That nobody is taking it seriously mm. enough to respect the structure mm -hmm. and respect the people who are putting in the work to make it, uh, to make the business side of things uh, mean something, yeah. right? So the people are there. Do they understand what transitioning that specific skill set would mean to move it here? Because, you know, even if you're working as a brand manager somewhere, right? Mm. You still have to deal with legal, you still have to deal with creative, you still have to lead. But we don't think those things apply to the creative industry, yeah. right? And you're right, it is a problem with 844. <laughs> Unless you're a lawyer, doctor, mm. you know, um, which yeah. other one was it? Teacher. Yeah, yeah, sure. Then it is not a recognized prof profession, right? So Kwanza Utaimba Badai is the thing yeah. we had our folks say, folks say all through. Yeah, yeah. Even if you are good and gifted, you had to go to school first. And most of the people who are really making it in the industry now do have a formal background, like a professional. That, that's good, I think. Right? Yeah. That, which is good. Yeah. It's fine. But had those things happened concurrently, I think that person would have been way ahead of where they are now. Mm. You know what I mean? But because we're forced to bench one and then pick it up later, yeah. pick up your passion later, then our industry is sort of handicapped. Because we're not going at the same rate as everybody else. So what you're saying is that, that there's plenty of good people that you would assume are, would be good managers, artist managers. Exactly. But they just... So who doesn't do the homework then? What it takes? Because you mentioned we just don't know what it takes, right? Yeah. I mean, wh wh why is that an issue? Because there's no... How do I say that? Hakuna Heshima. Hmm. This is informal, right? Yeah. It's a thing we are assumed to be doing for fun, right? It's not a nine-to-five there are still parents who ask their kids who are musicians who turns a yeah, sure. You know what yeah, I mean? When you're gonna get a real because job. it's and that's why I'm saying we're not putting in the work. Because for as long as we don't look at this as a noble, bill-paying profession, then even the people who are meant to hold your hand to make this thing a noble, being paying paying profession and doing the work but then isn't that a catch-22 like the, or the chicken and egg thing like isn't so always, what comes first isn't like, it are you gonna though? professionalize <laughs> up you know for, for me when I started management and it was just out of the blue I, I the story is out there quite a bit in terms of how we met with Saudi Soul but it was a random meeting I was never in the music business before yeah you know, I, when they asked me to manage them, I thought, I, I told them I'm going to ruin your careers. I've never done this before. They just said, do you? We know the music business yeah. a little bit. We'll work it out together. And we did. And I think it's really about, as you mentioned earlier, finding the right person on the other side. It's a mm. relationship, right? Exactly. I mean, and within that, if you are artist manager or you're making music or you're making burgers or you're making <laughs> textbooks, if you have a good flow, you can achieve almost anything with the That's other side, true. right? So back uh, to your question then, yeah. to what makes a good talent manager. Yeah. Um, I think a good talent talent manager has to be obsessed with you, for lack of a better term, right? They have to be believe in you enough mm. to put in the work now necessary to get you where they see you, mm. right? Um, and the reason I say is they have to be obsessed with you is because we have a lot of salespeople selling and things they don't like, mm. and we can see. We, there's a, uh, we, we like to pretend that the audience doesn't see. Um, the truth, mm. but they can. When a thing is genuine, it yeah. it sells itself. When yeah. a thing isn't, it's a tough sell. It's a tough sell. So if I believe in you 110, 
then I'm willing to take the chances necessary to get you where you need to be. Mm. So one of the things I think is incredibly important when you're looking for a talent manager is you ha have to sign, find somebody who understands um, you in and out of work mm -hmm. and then understands what trajectory you're on. Like, okay. what's the possibility with yeah. this person? If I'm obsessed with you, then there's nothing we can't do, right? Yeah. If I'm completely sold out here, there's nothing we can't do. Then there's a question, and mm -hmm. I agree 100%, right? Mm -hmm. You have to believe in what you're pushing, and, and it's such a intense relationship it really is you know um with my artists it's it's um when i was in my late 20s early 30s mm -hmm. it would be literally you know i had my girlfriend or at that time wife and i had saudi and those are my two main relationships and everything else was really just revolving around you that. know it's it, it so from that perspective when you scale up mm -hmm. like we did at ace Right. And when you scaled up and started managing multiple different influencers, et cetera, then how do you manage that balance? Because I don't think you necessarily need to be obsessed with every talent. You need mm -hmm. to believe and understand that this is the talent that you want to represent. Mm -hmm. And then you find the right day to day talent managers for mm -hmm. them who are what you were back then. Yeah. You know, obsessed and, and make sure that they really believe in it. But yeah. how do you how do you deal with the scaling up as, as um I don't think it's I, I don't think scaling up would be a pro is is a really big problem, mm. right? As also, I'm a small company. I'm nowhere near where Ace is, right? But the thing I'm learning very quickly is that um, the relationships are very different, mm. right? And even the way these people put their work out is very different. So my biggest um, their biggest ask of me mm -hmm. is to understand what those processes are mm -hmm. and then adjust accordingly. Another big thing that talent managers need to learn and artist managers have to learn to be is people who adjust easily and frequently, right? Mm. Because our, our thing is never constant. You know what I yeah. mean? Like we are constantly, you can have a gig now, you are supposed to start at 10, it starts at midnight. Like you just, yeah. you have to adjust, right? You have to be malleable. You have to be very malleable. So I think um, the, the problem with scale is that um, you, the direct contact mm. that they would want to have with you 24-7, yeah. 365, which can be managed. COVID has taught us everything can be yeah. managed. Space is good. So um, I think in those instances, for as long as scheduling is done well, mm. and for as long as they feel like their things have been handled with detail and with care, you don't have to be physically present for, for me to be obsessed with you. I can be obsessed with you on Monday, <laughs> and that obsession lasts until Friday when I we'll see you again. we obsessed with each other from 3 to 5 p.m. on Monday. I will see you again <laughs> on Friday. <laughs> for as long as you understand what the core of yeah. this relationship is, I think it's enough to carry yeah. you through the seasons. The problems begin when that trust or that yeah, no, be true. begins to feel shaky. Yeah, then now the, you begin to the have The experience we've had with scaling up is yes, yeah. there's, there's a lot of talent that want my direct. specifically attention, direct yes. attention, mm. but we work every day really hard on getting the right people that will even give them a better exactly. understanding and having a team around you. Yeah. I always like to say, you know, you have a bigger net, you catch more fish. That's you know? so true. Um, and as well, when people scale up, there's a reason why they scaled up. Mm. We have a larger network. We do this a lot more often, even though they might look at, there's a person, um, the other talent is getting this deal. Mm. But when we are speaking with another talent, with another client, that can automatically, through another, from, from another talent, bring another client to the other talent. So, That's so true. you know, it's, 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 it's inevitable and growth is there. So yeah. we've discussed a lot what talent managers do. Is mm -hmm. there something that you would say what talent managers shouldn't do? Babysit. Yeah. Okay. I don't know whether you agree, but... Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I think the we're biggest not, we're not mistake... Parents. We are not parents. <laughs> the biggest mistake we make in the beginning, especially the biggest mistake I made, was that allowing that 100% access. Yeah. Um, because it blurs the lines yeah, does, between yeah. what's personal and what's professional. And then there's demands on your time, and mm -hmm. then that creates now the arguments and the misconceptions of what mm. I'm meant to be doing for you. And I like to say manage, managers are not magicians, imagine. Mm. They need downtime. They need lead time. You know what I mean? They, there needs to be some sort of structure to how allow many, on for How many person. hours of sleep can you function, yeah. by the way? On, uh, you, you, I am a mother. I can pretty, even three is enough. So, but that is also one this, of the requirements, I think. But this is not the thing that needs to be put on the table when we're discussing. Sure, but whether, the nature of this business is 
you with you your talent on Saturday, you know, on Sunday night at an event, your talent finishes performing at two in the morning on Monday. And then you have a shoot on Sunday. Then they go, <laughs> you know, then they go to bed. Nobody expects the talent to be up at nine in the morning on Monday. No, but you have but to you be have up to, for right? Right? Yeah, yeah. So sleeping as well, I think one of the things a talent manager should have is you can't not function, you know, if you sleep three, four, five hours. You have to be able to function on those hours, I think. But, but no, I think Marek... There's seasons where that's accept- acceptable, right? Sure. Before an album drop or a big gig or a big brand campaign, mm. you know, those exceptions are there. And it's expected that you will be present for those things. And that's understandable. Mm. But that can't be a 365 thing, right? No, 100%. There needs to that's be some sort of structure yeah. that then allows for you to exist in this space as a functional human being. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't be buying milk for your daughter because you forgot. There's some lines. You know what I mean? There's just some lines. I mean, I guess what I would add to that as well is is try and avoid separating the jobs as in manager handles all the managerial stuff and yeah. artist handles all the artist stuff right from the beginning. And that's what I really wor- enjoyed about working with Saudi as well. Mm-hmm. We made sure that all our team meetings and everything, we are all there together. I wanted them to know what management is doing and vice versa. I wanted exactly. the team to know what the artist is doing because if you have that disconnect, yeah, I think that's bad for business. Because and that's I think the thing the I've end, learned yeah. also with uh, Njugush and team. Mm. We're very clear on what who does what, right? Okay. So in the beginning, because also we're learning, you know, we were sort of figuring out where everything, all the chips fall, yeah. you are sort of available for everything. But then you quickly learn that that's not practical. Mm. So one of the things we, we learned to do from very early on was assign roles. Mm-hmm. So we know if it's a production and the brief has been understood and everything is functioning, the production manager is there. I don't need to be there, right? Okay. Once the contract is signed and the deli- deliverables are understood, we're on the same page. Imagine I don't need to be there. You can shoot, give me content, and we keep it moving. I don't need to be there for everything. So I think it's being very clear about what your terms are and how those things interact, where the exceptions come in, right? Again, mm-hmm. we have to be malleable. Yeah. But then now also being very clear that malleable is not 365. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I think we've talked about what a manager should be, what the relationship between artists and manager is as well. Mm-hmm. What would you say uh, in regards to now, at what point in a talent or an artist's career is it right to get management? Oh, that's a hard one. Is it, is it correct to say that it may vary? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I, don't, I don't think there's a black... Like, again, yeah, the, like we said, there's no right or wrong yeah. answer. Um, I think for some people, there's some guys who become overnight sensations. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. And there's an influx of work and possibilities and a path. If that happens to you, get a manager immediately. Because if that thing is not structured from the very beginning, you're, you're not going to be in a good place and that... That thing you're doing, that wave you're riding is not sustainable, right? Agreed. However, there are some people who've built their careers over a city, over Nini, like over a period of time, right? Now, those guys have been managing their things without a manager. Mm. So unless they've gotten to the place where they absolutely cannot deal with the day-to-day running or whatever it is that they're doing and they need to outsource that, then get a manager at that point. I think also people misunderstand why you need a manager because... You don't need a manager if you're not doing anything. Does that make sense? Sure. Like a manager is not a magician. But it may be catch-22, right? Because hopefully a manager as well, because this is one thing I think for talent Mm -hmm. and for managers, Mm -hmm. managers don't get paid, you know. Uh, They earn a commission off of the business, right? So I think the catch-22 here is, is that if you're not doing anything, you don't need a manager, well, I think at that point, maybe you should consider getting a manager so mm-hmm. that you actually end doing up doing something. something Let right? me clarify what doing anything means. By doing anything yeah. means you have no vision, you have no real plan, you have... Sure, yeah. There's, there's no real meat for me to work with, right? So like you said, there's no right or wrong answer, I, I think, in that regard. I think, regards. So. I think yeah. even in that case, I feel like if you come across a professional manager yeah. and you're struggling with putting together a strategy, mm-hmm. a plan, you know, being strategic, some sort of a plan of action... I think sometimes a manager would be in the, you know, that's Best partially placed. a manager's role is, you know, helping to put that put, put that put together. It's a big part of actually the yeah. role, I think, yeah. in, in my opinion as well. So, yeah, we can catch ourselves in many kind of like uh, cash 22 or chicken and egg scenario. I mean, uh-huh. I think <clears throat> from my perspective, you're right. There's no right or wrong answer. It yeah. does vary depending on yeah. 
what type of talent or what type of an artist you are as well, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, there are famous talent out there. Joy Kendi's who are super successful, uh, influ- and she manages everything pretty much on Herself, her own, yeah. right? Um, at least that's what it seems like. Yeah. Uh, Saudi at one point, we had at Saudi Soul Entertainment 13 people running one band. Mm-hmm. Um, me being one of the 13 and then having a team of road managers, booking managers, PR, social media guys, mm. admin assistants, booking management. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think at the beginning, mm-hmm. I think what we're trying to answer over here is for talent that's watching this and they don't have, have management. When? How should they go about it if mm-hmm. they feel like they need one, right? Mm-hmm. I, I do believe, like we said earlier, as talent, no matter what it takes, and I know sometimes it's you don't want to do it and it's uncomfortable as talent to do your management at the beginning because mm-hmm. I think you do need to understand what it takes to run your own career, right? Because when you then outsource it, like in any career, in mm-hmm. it's, is it like, so what is it between artists, success story and the management? Is it 50-50? Is it 60-40? Is it 70-30? <laughs> you know, to put these things to bed, I would just say... Let's just be okay with it being 50-50, right? I, that, that, that's, that's frankly how I see it realistically. We yeah. know that there's so much talent out there mm-hmm. that never sees the main stage, yeah. you know. Yeah. And vice versa, there's a lot of talent out there that managed quite well as well because of an overnight sensation, overnight hit, mm. uh, to get there without management as well. Mm-hmm. So there's, again, no right or wrong. It yeah. just really depends who you are, what your weaknesses and what your strengths are. But like any relationship, it you know, professionalizing your relationships, I yeah. think, is key. So And being willing to have that conversation. Because exactly. I think a lot of guys walk into I want to, the conversation for I want you to yeah. be my manager without ever having thought about what the what it means, what the money means, right? So I think it's being open in that in that decision to mm. know that it, it will cost you some money. But then, but it will make you more measured, money. Most yeah. hopefully, if yes, it's a exactly. right relationship, it will make it you will more make money. you money. Yeah. If it's a bad relationship, then that happens as well. Yeah. You must be able to kind of be okay to let go. Don't yeah. get stuck in a dysfunctional no, relationship. No. And I think that applies to so many things. You know, there's no loyalty when things are going wrong. Exactly. Just be honest. If you exactly. mess with my money, then let's have sure. a conversation. But so yeah, so we, I don't think we've arrived at you know to maybe someone to, 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 to kind of capture this point. I don't think there's a right or wrong time to get management. Uh, but mm. at the beginning as well, you don't need to find, you know, Muthoni necessarily or mm. Marek or Ace. Mm. Look in your circles, mm-hmm. I would say, to up and coming talent mm-hmm. um, and find somebody who is studying a business degree at your uni or within oh, your family smart. or, you know, because mm. those are the beginnings when you're trying to build a team, you know, our For the team of 12 or 13, we were spending upwards of 2 million shillings just in salaries, for mm. example. Okay, mm. that's not that's, not that's sustainable money. once you have a turnover that's yeah. double or triple that, hopefully, yeah. you know, a month. Um, so you've professional, but at the beginning, you know, start having a look at your friends, your uni classmates, your, you know, in your network, mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure you can find somebody who is studying accounting. Somebody who's studying to be a lawyer. a lawyer. They need practical yeah. experience at the beginning. Yeah. They're your friends. They'll help you. Hopefully, you'll have that kind of a relationship and you can start there. They're not going to be full-time. You don't yeah. need anybody full-time in any case at that mm-hmm. point. Mm-hmm. Um, and you should be really in charge as well. So, yeah, I think we got into the bottom of that. Mm-hmm. Now, a few other technical questions that are on here that we have to discuss. For example, like, <laughs> uh-huh. how many years are you typically with a manager um, on the first term of your contract? That's subjective, isn't it? Very as well, yeah. yeah. I don't think there's a hard stop, especially um, if the relationship is going well. Yeah. Um, maybe. But I mean, when you do your contract, and let's, important to have contracts, mm-hmm. right? You don't want this to be a verbal no, agreement. It can't be a handshake. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, but I think maybe if you're sussing out whether the relationship works for you or not, maybe three months. I know three months is not enough to get any work done. No, not for yeah. a manager. But three months is just enough to figure out whether there's enough If there of is a relationship. A yeah, yeah. Is there yeah. a vibe? Yeah. You know, can we work together? And then now maybe push it to a year to see. Because sometimes yeah. it does take you that year to get your first big deal, right? So 
maybe a year than review. Yeah. But it's normally very it's very flexible. Like I don't think even when I signed with Akin Andrew Gush, we didn't have a hard stop. But just like we knew we had a thing we wanted to do and we had a plan, our strategy was sound. So we just went for it. Mm. We act, I think we put our heads up after two years and we're like, you guys have been working together what? for we two years. <laughs> yeah. But there isn't a hard stop for yeah. no, a there period is, uh, of Definitely time. not a hard stop. But no. in how I like to approach it is I try and do this homework mm -hmm. prior to committing, even though there's only so much you can find out about somebody. But before I start working with anybody, I do my due diligence mm. and I expect the same from their end. Mm -hmm. I guess in our roles, our experience and expertise is already out there in mm. terms of what we've done. Yeah. But still, it's not just about that. Do we click, right? Mm, do, exactly. we have a, do we have a vibe, like you said? Yeah. Um, so for me, I try and do it before. Mm -hmm. Our contracts are generally anywhere between two to up to six years. And from a manager's perspective... you actually perspective, get artists to commit to you for six years? Yeah. That sounds like a superpower. Yeah, yeah. Artists run away from contracts so much. They do, but I mean, I guess, we, you know, you you have to look at it from my perspective as well. Like, mm -hmm. If I'm putting As an artist way, manager, mm -hmm. I'm going to put immediately. I'm not going to wait for a year or two or three. Exactly. I'm immediately going to put you in touch with my network, in touch with my expertise, That's in touch so with true. my team. And I've built that over a decade I feel plus. like I'm in class now. Uh -huh. You know, so... <laughs> When I have these realistic conversations, those ones that shy away, well, perhaps we're not on the same page mm. because you need to also appreciate both ways. Yeah, We are trying to work together. I appreciate your artistry. I appreciate who you are. But vice versa, you also need to appreciate the amount of work we've put into this. Exactly. So within the first year, I'm going to, this is where the most of my, let's say, my team's transfer of knowledge Begins to show. Be, you know, is really concentrated at the beginning because mm. we are going to have top-down strategy meetings, getting to know each other, this, and there'll so many of these instances are like, wow, I've never thought of that. Branding, I've never, positioning. You know, further down the road, things. we've exactly. already gone through this. Mm. So, you know, I do build into my contracts like a six months in case stuff is just not working. Mm. Let's bounce. Mm. I've learned that from experience that mm. you need that. Mm. But otherwise, I want the artist to be committed depending on where they are. If they're greenfield artists, mm. meaning You're they've got barely from... a thousand followers on social media, yeah. they've got just a few singles out on YouTube, they've performed maybe a handful of times live, but you see real talent, from their end, looking at us, we the, the track record is there, right? Yeah. From my end, I need to make sure that, okay, if I'm going to impart all of this knowledge, mm. I don't want to do this for the first one year and then and you're going to take all leave. of it and bounce. Yeah. Because the, so from that perspective, I do believe in more longer-term contracts. Yeah. Um, but for somebody, if I, let's say, at this point, sign somebody like Calligraph, yeah. you know, we're going to go year to year, right? Mm. Because, you know, he already knows his business. He's exactly. already successful in what he does. Yeah. So he would be working with us just to increase his network yeah. and just to kind of push, professionalize a little bit more and, you know, get access to our network, for example, mm. right? But somebody like Earl Wynn, for example, who you'll mm. hear and I, we're looking forward to you guys meeting him, uh, incredible talent, the prodigal son of Kakamega, like like to call him. Um, mm. You know, somebody like that, I know it's going to take time. Mm. You know, Saudi is a journey of 15 years, Right. Somebody like a Greenfield artist like Earl Wynn, it's going to take three to five years. And those Before. success stories where overnight success, we say in this business, as fast as you go up, is more a... likely it's going exactly. to go down, right? Yeah. That steady growth and process and stuff. So, mm. yeah, there's no right or wrong. But in terms of established agencies and established agents, mm -hmm. you're always going to run into long more long term because we know it's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, it's going to be a lot of information and connecting you to our network. Yeah. And it's going to take a couple of years until that investment that we put in pays off. Pays off. That's true. You know. the, the reason I'm, maybe I'm also a smaller scale than, than you are, I don't have time to invest the six years at this point in my career, right? Um, if I can see in the six months that it's not working, I need to be able to pull the plug quick. Right, um, and it's because I don't have the muscle or the resources to yeah. putting in work here, if I know this thing isn't going anywhere, that's why I tend to have shorter term mm. um, contracts, uh, and also because digital is such a fast evolving yeah. space. If 
the people you're working with don't don't do the work to evolve and adapt for example for a very hot minute pictures were it now we've moved to videos if this person can't if you have to figure out how to do your videos and how to we're in trouble because yeah. surely these are things i'm expecting you to come to the table with because you are the talent mm. so just weighing like i think i'm more high risk than you are at this point <laughs> because i i just don't have the time to yeah invest the six years it would need to get you where you want to be can i give you an year i can give you a year but i don't think i can give you the six years so my contracts are generally normally way shorter term okay then now they roll over mm. depending on how how we're working so let's go to another part of it so that people can get a sense mm -hmm. how do we we touched upon it a little bit mm -hmm. managers are hardly ever salaried mm -hmm. right it's a commission based but where do these commissions come from so from your talent working with influencers what are your income streams or the stream the revenue streams that that you take a percentage of and also give us a range of you know what kind of percentage um do you a commission so i i think the range is the same it's between 15 to 30 percent depending on what the gig is but um again can we just please move to the place where we are salaried just putting it out there <laughs> But okay, so the, the, that's an industry you mean specific. You a, a base salary <laughs> and a commission based, exactly. or you would be happy no, no, just with pure. No, no, yeah, yeah, no, my head. Yeah, yeah, no, that, <laughs> Don't people are gonna work. Yeah, it's gonna be like a government <laughs> job. <laughs> no, 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 no. The commission is <laughs> still to say important. Government workers are not working. So. <laughs> so it's. I think it's important to also put it out there that this thing I'm doing is very. So we are copying. So what what I'm doing is I'm copying what we we do with artist management, right? Mm -hmm. That's the model. So the model doesn't change. So everything we would do for an artist, say to speak, is what we're doing for content uh, creators, for influencers mm -hmm. as well. Um, and it's fifteen to thirty percent. But how else can we make money? Is what we've been asking ourselves, especially post COVID. Post COVID is where we got good money because hmm. we realized there were so many ways to diversify how we were working um now over and above the actual content you put out for a brand online there's appearances there's events there's emceeing um you can tour the people who are actually sent around the country to do a specific gig with a brand they like Colgate you know what mm. i mean um so you can become a specific brand ambassador for even as just a social media influencer yeah. if you're really in this thing to be successful and to make this thing viable you even you have to be willing to adapt if i get you a gig to mc whether or not you've been on stage before sis please let's do some classes you're going to be on stage next yeah. week but that also comes from being able to trust your yeah. your person enough for I'm them pretty we're missing with Sonia here she would definitely add a lot to this because as a <laughs> as a as a as an entertainment entrepreneur she's definitely diversified exactly quite a so bit. much yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 if please that's the place you start yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> and being willing to take even those unknown steps right because once you you stick to a box for I'm a musician I just sing songs or I'm a content creator so many opportunities mm. pass you by be willing to do those things afraid and land on the fly You know what I mean? Because the more you do it, the better you get. The first one, you might fumble a bit, but it's okay. You're there to learn. Yeah. And the the fact that somebody is willing to take a chance on you having do, done this new thing you've never done before means they see something mm. in you that you you don't necessarily already see in yourself. Yeah. So just be quick. Be yeah. quick about your transition and your... So the possibilities are endless. And the markets are very similar. Mm. So even artists, you guys will be asked to do two songs and then sing happy birthday mm. and then do another two songs and then talk to the md mm. or talk about a brand it's the same you have to be willing to adapt yeah. and create those opportunities there's nothing we can do us guys used to say we cut keys while you wait and it's a thing somebody i care about very much says all the time but it's true we have to be those people for what you need i can do it yeah you'd better learn on the fly but i can do it so yeah so i mean yeah. in 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 music etc i mean let's say there is your obvious your gigging right that's 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 an that's income number stream mm -hmm. number two, and i think that's reserved for the top 20 30 40% and more closer to the 20% is after you're gigging there's also once you get to gear, garner some influence in the industry and some following you start looking at some really interesting paychecks from influencer exactly. endorsement brand mm -hmm. ambassador kind of things mm -hmm. right um funny enough that after gigging the one thing we don't say especially around music is mm -hmm. 
royalties uh, because it's unfortunate that it's still not super reality, well enforced yeah. mm-hmm. over here. Um, and, you know, there's been multiple attempts since I've been here and been in the business for over a decade to try and get the right collection agencies and mm. the right right agencies to really give artists what they des- what they deserve because once they put out their intellectual property once they put out their song once they put out their creative work and it's being used in media houses yeah. it's being used on radio stations it's being used at rallies it's being used in clubs to get people dancing and mm-hmm. then consuming you know food and drinks in these clubs that you know all of these organizations should really pay their share for using somebody else's creativity mm. um so Pity we don't mention it second after gigging because that's the most obvious. But yes, that is one of the mid to long term money that artists can depend on after they create some work. Mm-hmm. That it takes a lot of time to get into it. It does take a lot of creativity, experience to put it out there so that they get reimbursed for it going down the road. So you have your gigs, you have your royalties, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, you have your endorsement deals, social media campaigns, appearances. Um, what else are we missing here? But yeah, I think you've discussed several of these as yeah. well. And, and so have we. So there are multiple channels. Um, we want to definitely professionalize up, increase your channels. Then there's merchandising that we're forgetting yes, as well. Yes, that's a big one. Products. Mm. You can, number one, endorse a product or you can work with a product where if you market it, you then don't you just get, get one of payment, but you get a commission of sales exactly. as well. So there's so many opportunities where you can get paid. And I think... We spoke about it earlier, we touched upon it, that because of several things in the industry, it seems like it's more of a still entertainment scene more than an industry. And I think we've moved leaps and bounds and we have to continue on making sure that, um, you know, we are on the right track and keep on pushing to make sure that yeah. we are Nollywood uh, in the next three to five years or the industry that you see in South Africa mm-hmm. or even just the, in the neighbors in TZ, Um, etc., and that we eventually get up to the level because worldwide, the entertainment industry is a multi gazillion dollar industry. industry. It's something that carries your culture, your heritage, mm. your past, passes yeah. it on to new generations, mm. allows people to loosen up and have a good time, allows people to look deeper into things and understand things from a, you know, different perspective as well so it's mm-hmm. it's it's it has a multifaceted impact on society i think mm-hmm. and like you said still many parents and this generation still don't look at it as a viable way of 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 making money as soon as artist management artists get together they find these relationships mm-hmm. and all the things that we talked about here today i think you know the industry will be more of an industry and it will people will start seeing the benefits and then parents will be like I uh, did you just buy me a house from th- this is a good job this actually This is a very good job. This is a good job, you know. Um and we're going to get there. I, yeah. I think it's But matter of time. But I think we're time. on the right path. We are. I think having these conversations and being willing to go through the growing pains of formalizing and putting structures and um in your in your craft because you know for a lot of these guys this is their craft it's the thing they're good mm. at. So they don't necessarily see the business side of things. So being willing to outsource and put somebody else to play that role for you. I think if more people, if we, if we do it successfully for another maybe 10 years, Mike, mm. I think we'll be very far. We'll be there. So yeah, we'll be there. Yeah. Muthoni, thanks. That was really fun. I wish we had it a really little was. bit more time. <laughs> I wish we also had the other Muthoni, MDQ, <laughs> join us. We miss you, girl. We um, did. Spending time with your newborn baby. Exciting. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, yeah, right. Congrats, girl. So thanks for having both of us. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, had a great Mike. time hosting this. Um, and yeah, looking forward to any other sessions and 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 uh, meeting out there in the field in the future as well. So thanks a lot. It was great. It was great to be here. Thank you so much, Mike. Thanks, everyone. Bye.